could be used. Thanks very much. Yeah, I can answer. when you go very small yes. in scale, the liquid becomes very viscous. Does that imply that if you could build a very large being, it could move through the air in the same way? Well, and that the air would then become thick enough to support it? If you, if you up the scale... You have big airplanes, it works fine. Yeah, I know, but supposing you upped it 10,000 times or something... With there the nothing air. much happens, because already the... Uh, the resistance of the air, I mean, it's a dynamic resistance now. The, the ickiness of air, what we call a viscosity, the analog of the honey, is long since very unimportant. The motions that you produce with the air propellers and so on start a flow, which it, it's true that the last motions as it dies out has something to do with the viscosity. But the initial motions are the ones that are important. They're dynamic. The airplane goes by the inertia of pushing air down not anything to do with resistance, you see, by thickness. It's just the mass okay. that moves, that's pushed down by the wing as it goes through. <coughs> and the recoil from the air going down holds the plane up. And that would be just as good for a larger plane. However, it is true that if you took the same kind of an airplane and simply increased it by a hundred times, it won't fly. <laughs> the reason this time is that weight has increased as the cube and the lifting power from the area of the wings only by the square, you know, the, the same thing backward. So you have to have it hollow. Notice our big airplanes are hollow. Because the weight, if the airplane really had the corresponding weight as you increase the size, it would get more and more difficult to make it fly. It goes like that. I mean, everything that you think of this, this changes and that changes. And it's true that at different scales, different things are important. So at 10,000 times, the air does not become viscous. No, the air doesn't become viscous. No, it's going the wrong way. Viscous, you've got to get effective viscosity. It's going for smaller sky. Yes, sir. Well, let's see if I can phrase this right. You are an original thinker. I would like to ask you, how would you go about designing maybe a miniature, somewhat smaller than Grand Coulee, an anti-gravity machine? I can't. <laughs> that you could use for... No, I can't. I don't know how to make any anti-gravity machine. You would make the most problem. It doesn't make any difference. I still don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the game I play is a very interesting one. It's imagination in a tight straitjacket, which is this, that it has to agree with the known laws of physics. I'm not going to assume that maybe the laws of physics have changed, then I can design something. But I try, supposing it's everything that we know is true, as we think it is, as if we do. If we're wrong, of course, we can redesign something with the new laws later. But the game is to try to figure out with what we know, what's possible. So it requires imagination to think of what's possible. And then it requires an analysis back, a checking, to see whether it fits, it's allowed according to what is known, okay? And in the case of an anti-gravity machine, I immediately give up because my understanding of the laws of gravity are such that I don't see any way, it doesn't make sense for anti-gravity, okay? The only anti-gravity machine, that is things which oppose gravity, which are very effective, are things like you're using now, a pillow or a floor under your behind. That is an anti-gravity machine and it will support you in space above the earth, a few feet in this case, for un reasonably unlimited time. Yes. How absolute are the known laws of physics? <coughs> they always we find more things all the time, uh, and there are un things that are not known. So there's an edge that's unknown, and there's a certain um, uh, amount that's, of behavior that's been studied over and over in a certain realm. You see, there are variables that change, like the size or the dimensions or something like that. When you get too far to too small, if I start to talk about distances that are a million times a million times a million times a million times smaller than a centimeter, then I don't know what the white laws are. 
okay? But in the realm of a few centimeters, for example, in ordinary behavior, they're pretty well gone over. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with them. And the laws that I need for the scales that I've been using, down to atomic scales and so on, are in extremely good control. It's not very likely that I'm making any mistake there. Okay? In the realm that I've been talking about in this lecture, if I were talking about much smaller than that, then I would be more, more humble. <laughs> yes. I've got uh, one from way back when you early started that was made. Oh, you're way behind. Oh, I know. <laughs> Slow you. Know. Yes. It's, it's, it's about uh, making things with, with parts that are one atom big or yes. even five atoms big. Yes. I got. I used 100 atoms. Until you said you were not going to break the laws of physics, yes. I wasn't going to heckle you about this, but I, it, it has been concerning me from the wow. amount how you're going to make these atoms stand still or, or do they, they just do that. The atoms don't stand still. At an ordinary temperature, they're always jiggling. But if you take a substance like gold or silver, the forces between them is rather strong, and they stay next to each other. They just jiggle in place. Atoms which jiggle in place are solids. Things that are solid are made of atoms, which although they're jiggling, they never get out of place. If you took one away, the other's in the right place. It, comes, it pulls them back. It's, it's a perpetual check with your friend. You okay? Yes, I'm okay. It's like the people marching in a... <laughs> It's, it's, it's like the high school band march, okay? Nobody really knows what to do. They're going like this, and it's okay. It holds together, okay? But if there's too much jiggling and too many people are out, you can imagine if this line gets broken up because he looks at him and he's far out, and so he tries to get out, and he gets out, and so it all tumbles around each other. So if you make too much temperature or use a substance where the forces are too weak, they roll over and they lose the strength, and that's a liquid. Okay, so I don't want to make this out of liquid. I wanted, I said gold and silver, and I meant ordinary temperatures. 